In this video, I'm going to talk about coagulation disorders. And actually, to understand the pathology of coagulation or the disorders of coagulation, you have first to understand the physiological coagulation. Every one of us have a physiological process of coagulation when we bleed we have a hemorrhage and so on okay and to understand the pathology you have to understand the physiological process of stopping hemorrhage the physiological process in our bodies to stop hemorrhage is hemostasis process okay and i found it pretty good to start with this video Even under physiological conditions, a small tear can appear in the wall of a blood vessel. In order to prevent blood loss, platelets and coagulation factors such as the pivotal factor 10, acting in a coordinated manner, close this wound. The platelets are responsible for a first sealing of the tear. Then, a number of coagulation factors are activated leading to the formation of fibrin strands which stabilize the growing clot. So from this video we can conclude that multiple factors play a role in uh, hemostasing the, uh, the the hemorrhage or bleeding that happens okay one of them as we see uh, so the platelets okay it's play a primary and very important role in the hemostasis process and the other one is the coagulation factors the coagulation factors cascade cascade okay also we have other factors like blood vessels okay when we bleed we have to have a kind of uh, vasoconstriction so that uh, we limit the blood that will uh, leak from the blood vessel that is teared okay so we have a, a neural constriction in the in the blood vessels due to the effect of the endothelin and uh, less nitrous oxide nitrous oxide normally dilate the blood vessels okay and the endothelin constrict in the cases of hemorrhage we lose a lot of nitrous oxide and we have uh, a lot of endothel endothelin that will constrict the blood vessels so that we will lose uh, or we will lose less uh, blood okay now let's move to the platelets the platelets actually is the first thing to move when we have a bleeding in a process we call a primary hemostasis okay what the platelets really do that it adhere ad adheres to the blood vessel via a factor that we call von Willebrand factor von Willebrand factor see this is the platelet this is the blood vessel it will adhere oh, okay so here is the uh, tear of the blood vessel the platelets will adhere here another one and another one it they will form a block okay and the platelets will adhere via what we call the von Willebrand factor with factor 8 okay uh, they will adhere the platelet to the blood uh, vessel okay so th after the platelet adherence to the blood vessel it will have some changes in its shape okay the shape of the platelet will change and this change in a platelet shape is the activation of the platelet and with the platelet activate okay it will release some granules like serotonin okay ADP and thromboxane these factors will lead to further platelet aggregation and recruitment on the uh, uh, on the blood vessel that is third okay so we will have a recruitment and aggregation of blood vessels as effect of serotonin IDP and thromboxane and the thrombin okay and this recruitment and aggregation of platelet will lead to the uh, eclot or the uh, blood okay so again we have this process is a primary hemostasis we have a platelet the platelet will adhere to the blood vessels via the von Willebrand factor okay 
the adherence of the uh, blood vessel uh, platelet to blood vessel will change its shape by some factors the shape of change uh, the change of the shape of the platelet is the activation of the platelet when the platelet is activated it will release some granules like serotonin adp and thrombopoxin a this granules will lead to further aggregation and recruitment of the platelet forming the platelet plug this video again is very good too in a first step towards clot formation, platelets are recruited to the site of vessel injury by now exposed molecules of the vessel wall, such as collagen and von Willebrand factor. This factor mediates the linking of platelets to collagen via a specific receptor in the platelet membrane. The resulting change of shape of the platelet from its resting state into the dendritic form indicates activation. The activated platelet in turn releases prothrombotic molecules such as adenosine diphosphate, ADP. By binding to its receptors, ADP induces aggregation. And recruits further platelets to the site. Thromboxane is another important mediator of platelet activation and aggregation. Under its influence, the platelets cross-link with each other. These interlocking mechanisms cause platelet activation to snowball. The clot grows rapidly. Activated platelets also trigger the coagulation cascade and thus the formation of thrombin. Thrombin, in turn, stimulates platelet activation even further, a continuous feedback loop. Additionally, thrombin induces the formation of fibrin for the mesh stabilizing the clot. The self-reinforcing process of platelet activation, crucial in the formation of blood clots, is an obvious therapeutic target in conditions caused by inappropriately triggered blood coagulation. Okay, so this is the rule of platelet in primary hemostasis. We have also a secondary hemostasis. Secondary hemostasis actually is the act of making fibrin, and fibrin is the uh, <clears throat> the things that cross link on the platelets, okay, and make the fibrin clot, which is a much more stable form of the clot, okay. So uh, platelets alone is very fragile okay they are not well fixed uh, plug but when we have a fibrin over them then we have a very stable clot okay now i'm going to talk about the formation of this clot i'll try to make it as easy as possible okay okay so here <coughs> sorry is a graph that uh, it clarify uh, the uh, the pathways of making the uh, coagulation pathway okay I'm sorry so we have an extrinsic pathway an intrinsic pathway and common pathway and remember always the end product is the fibrinic load the fibrinic load that will cross link on the platelet to make it much more stronger let's start with the extrinsic pathway okay on the blood vessels that is tiered we have what we call the tissue factor okay the tissue factor will uh, interact with 7a factor this is 7a factor and they will activate factor 10 okay to make it factor 10a this is the activated form of factor 10 and the factor 5 the factor 5a and phospholipids okay so the tissue factor and the factor 7 is the parts of the extrinsic pathway what are their function to activate factor 10 to make it factor 10a and factor 5 to make 5a and the phospholipids this is the extrinsic pathway the intrinsic pathway actually is uh, uh, somehow complicated but I'm going to talk about uh, the brief talk about it okay we have factor 12 factor 11a they all are activate activated 
okay and the most important factors in intrinsic pathway is the factor 10 a and the factor 9 a in extrinsic pathway the tissue factor and the factor 7 in the intrinsic pathway we have factor 10 and 9 they also uh, make the same function of um, uh, activating the factor 10 into the factor 10 a and we have five uh, factor 5 a and phospholipids okay this is the in extrinsic and in intrinsic pathway okay extrinsic factor 7 tissue factor intrinsic factor 8 and factor 9 then now we have activated factor 10 and activated factor 5 and phospholipids this is the first step in common pathway this is the common thing between the extrinsic and intrinsic pathway is the activated factor 10 and activated fa factor 5 and the phospholipid the act of uh, activated factor 10 and activated factor 5 and the phospholipid is to converge the prothrombin into a thrombin prothrombin is converted into a thrombin and the act of a thrombin in addition to easing the uh, platelet aggregation is to convert the fibrinogen okay into the fibrin and this is the target of this process okay so again we have intrinsic and ex intrinsic and extrinsic pathway the target of extrinsic and extrinsic pathway is to make activated factor 10 okay and activated factor 5 and we have phospholipids the activated factor 10 and 5 phospholipid will convert the prothrombin into thrombin and the activated thrombin will uh, convert the fibrinogen into fibrin and the fibrin is what uh, fixate the platelet plug to make the activated fibrin a clot here is another graph that uh, cl clarify this thing we have the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway in the extrinsic pathway we have the factor 7 here it is not yet activated here is activated okay with the tissue factor the factor 7 with the tissue factor will activate the factor 10 which is unactivated here to the activated form of factor 10 also the intrinsic pathway plays the same rule with factor 9 okay this is the activated form of factor 9 okay with factor i'm sorry this is 11 this is the factor 9 with uh, uh, with the calcium okay and phospholipid here we have the activated form of factor uh, 9 okay with factor 8 the factor 9 so 9 plus 8 here in the intrinsic pathway will activate factor 10 into the activated form this is the activated form of factor 10 the activated form with factor 10 with the activated form with factor 5 will convert the probe thrombin into a thrombin and the thrombin will convert the fibrinogen into the fibrin mono monomer okay and the fibrin will uh, produce the fibrin polymer which will cross link with uh, platelet to form the uh, activated uh, uh, the blood <coughs> okay this is a third scheme that clarify that we have a visual injury we have a von will uh, one will front uh, factor okay that will, uh, 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 that is actually that is uh, uh, active <laughs> interact with the subendothelial collagen to adhere the platelet there after the platelet adhesion and activation it will uh, release the adp the thrombocene and the thrombin all these things will lead to platelet aggregation this is the a plug of platelets on the other hand and simultaneously we will have a tissue factor okay with factor 7 that will uh, play a role in activation the factor 10 also we have the factor 9 and the factor 8 in the intrinsic pathway that will play the same role here we have the activated form uh, 10 okay the activated factor 10 will uh, release the thrombin from 
prothrombin and the thrombin will play a role in uh, in platelet aggregation and the role in conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin which will form the uh, stable a clot okay so this is the final cascade i'm repeating myself so that you can understand this because i found it somehow hard to understand okay so we have a wound we have factor seven and tissue factor this is the what what pathway this is the extrinsic pathway okay this is the activated factor 10 okay uh, the uh, plus factor 5 and phospholipid it will release a thrombin from prothrombin and thrombin will release fibrin at the site of vessel injury the first platelets arrive to start sealing the wound simultaneously the coagulation cascade with its various coagulation factors is activated this involves two pathways the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathway Extrinsic activation begins with now exposed molecules of the vessel wall, such as tissue factor, which forms a complex with factor 7. Finally leading to the activation of factor 10. This factor 10A is the point at which the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathways of the coagulation cascades meet. The intrinsic pathway consists of various coagulation factors activating each other in a chain reaction. At its end, a complex with an additional cofactor is formed. This complex now activates factor 10. Since the two pathways merge at the level of factor 10A, this factor has a pivotal role in the coagulation cascade. Further down the cascade, factor 10A, in combination with 5A, activates thrombin and induces the so-called thrombin burst. One molecule of factor 10A can catalyze the formation of a thousand molecules of thrombin. These large amounts of thrombin cause the further activation of platelets and the enhanced formation of fibrin. Fibrin then, then forms strands, strands making, making up the mesh that stabilizes, stabilizes the platelet plug, plug in an arterial clot and holds together the red blood cells in a venous clot. clot. It, it can, can be concluded that the central role of factor 10A in the coagulation cascade makes it a viable target for therapeutic intervention in pathologically altered blood coagulation. So, is the process uh, end, uh, end here no it doesn't end here because the clot that is formed must be destructed after that must be lysed okay so that we have uh, no problem with this clot okay so th there are some mechanisms that uh, prevent the or uh, 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 lies this clot we have the natural inhibitors of coagulations the, these are some factors that are in blood that prevent the uh, coagulation or, co or inhibit the coagulation like antithrombin okay and the factor c and s okay and what we call tfpi okay this is the first mechanism also we have the fibrinolytic system the fibrinolytic system is a system that works in fibrinolysis and the lysis of the fibrin that is formed okay so let's get back to the natural inhibitors of coagulation uh, th their function is to dissolute the clot for example the antithrombin is a serine protease inhibitor okay uh, they uh, uh, inhibit uh, the factors that lead to a coagulation what factors factor 9 factor 11 factor 12 they all are uh, extrinsic uh, i'm sorry intrinsic pathway factors okay and they regulate the factor 10 and the thrombin so remember that antithrombin works on the intrinsic pathway factor 9 11 12 and the factor 10 and the thrombin okay the factors C and S inactivate the activated factor 5 and factor 8. I like remember it by, by C, 
is uh, when we complete it we have the Arabic 5 the Arabs write 5 like this okay the S if we complete it we will have 8 so it is uh, it an uh, inactivate the factor C uh, and uh, uh, the factors 5 and factor 8 okay this is the first uh, this is what I want you to know about the natural inhibitor of a calculation the antithrombin the factors C and S now let's move to the fibrinolytic system the plasmin okay that works on fibrin to lyse it okay this is a scheme that will clarify things here we have the uh, plasminogen plasminogen is the product that uh, with the uh, with the effect of the tissue plasminogen activator will be converted into the plasmin a plasmin okay will digest the fibrin in two stages in the first stage it will partially digest fibrin okay uh, when the fibrin that is digested will have high affinity for plasminogen after that it will again work in this fibrin and rapidly lies it to fibrin degradation uh, uh, products okay we have other details in this scheme for example there are some factors that prevent the conversion of plasminogen into plasmin what are them to convert the plasminogen into plasmin we have to have tissue plasmi plasminogen activators if we have thing that inhibit the tissue plasmin activator then it will inhibit the plasminogen into plasmin and we will have a stable coagulation that is not lysed we have what we call plasminogen activator inhibitor plasminogen activator inhibitor from the name it inhibits the activator of plasminogen so that it not convert into plasmin and this will prevent the degradation of the fibrin into the fibrin degradation products okay so we will have no lysis also we have anti plasmin alpha 2 alpha 2 anti plasmin this will work directly on a plasmin uh, preventing it from working on fibrin and forming the fibrin degradation product so remember them plasminogen activator inhibitor and alpha 2 anti plasmin so here is a clot okay occlusive thrombus here we have the fibrin that should be uh, lysed by the plasmin okay but plasmin should be converted uh, first from plasminogen by the this is the plasminogen should be converted into plasmin by the activates or the activator of plasminogen this is the plasmin the plasmin will play a role in fibrin dissolve okay so here we have a dissolved dissolved so this this were the uh, physiology of coagulation okay uh, the video i used is from the uh, uh, channel which is the uh, thrombosis advisor if you want to watch the videos by yourself it is thrombosis advisor okay this is this was the physiology in the next video i'm going to talk about the coagulation disorders I'm sorry for uh, prolonging this lecture uh, just because this uh, this subject is not that easy okay and to understand it in a good way i hope i will thank you very much see you in the